So in some of our other videos, we've looked at it, uh, articles that really are grounded in fact, news articles, hard news articles, and even feature articles that really are grounded in fact and rely primarily on uh, on sharing facts and and um, you know, just the who, what, when, where, why, and how of, of what happened, all those types of things. But there's another style of article that can be helpful for folks who work in public relations uh, that, that really rely and focus more on opinion. Not every article is grounded in just a straight up fact. So let's take a look at opinion articles in this video and see how they might be uh, useful for us in the field of public relations as well. So what is an opinion article or what's popularly known as an op-ed? Um, an op-ed is just an article that represents the strong, informed, and focused opinion of the writer on an issue of relevance to a targeted audience. Okay, so an op-ed really is just an opinion article. Uh, it's called that because the opinion page used to appear opposite of the editorial page in traditional newspapers, so they just start calling it an op-ed, but really it's an opinion article. Um, now, notice that it does it can have strong opinions we don't have to be as objective uh, op-eds are very subjective but but they do they can have strong opinions but they do need to be informed first of all you can't just spew all this stuff i mean you can it's not but it's not going to get published and it's not going to be meaningful so it should be informed opinions and focused opinions this is not just a, a rant area it needs to be focused on a particular topic or idea or some you know singular thing so an article that represents the strong, informed, and focused opinion of the writer on an issue of relevance to a targeted audience. That's key as well, that it needs to be important to whatever the targeted audience of that publication is. Otherwise, they're not going to be interested in publishing it. The audience isn't going to be interested in reading it. So, And if that's the case, then why are you writing it? So that's what an op-ed is, an opinion article. So how do we use an op-ed in public relations real quickly? Just we use op-eds first to advocate for a position related to our objective. So whatever we're trying to do, we can write an op-ed related to that that will that will advocate for our position. We can use it to try and persuade an audience to take action in the service of those goals. What, again, whatever our objective is, we can use an opinion article to try and tell an audience, you should get involved. You should care about this. This is what you should do. We can persuade the audience as more uh, intently in an op-ed. Uh, we can use it to increase the level of exposure for our client or our cause, whatever that is. Um, so just to make the uh, the perspective prospective audience aware of what's happening. And we can use it to reach new audiences. Maybe this is a publication that the, the audience isn't familiar with what we're working at or what we're concerned with. So um, we can use an op-ed as a, as a new avenue, a different channel to reach an entirely different, different audience at times than we can with, again, more of a traditional hard news article or even a feature article. An op-ed can open up an entirely new audience for us. So, <coughs> excuse me, how are op-eds different from those other articles, from, you know, from hard news or from um, feature articles or whatever? Well, op-eds, first of all, they are more subjective. They are, you know, again, they are opinionated. They are clearly driven towards a specific opinion. We don't have to even put on the the, the cloak of, of objectivity here. We can say, this is what I think. This is what I believe. And this is why I think you should believe and think and, and act in the same way. We have that openness of that subjectivity there. Uh, they're also oftentimes shorter. Uh, oftentimes, op-eds are more in the 750 to 800 word range. So that's going to be shorter than probably a, a, a traditional hard news story and certainly shorter than a feature article. So we don't have a lot of time with, with op-eds. There, I mean, you know, a lot of space to accomplish what we're trying to do. So they're often shorter than other articles. Um, they're often less fact-driven, although you do need fact, of course. But they're not as driven by those things. Again, hard news articles in particular are really driven by facts. Who, what, when, where, how, why. Those, those are the facts, right? In op-eds, we're going to focus more on why you should care and why you should think this specific thing. Not just what happened, but why this is important to you and what it means. So they're less fact-driven and more driven by opinion, by subjectivity, um, by pushing an audience uh, toward a call to action, those types of things. Uh, op-eds have a very specifically defined point of view. Again, traditional journalism, subjectivity is not part of the objectivity is the goal of more traditional journalism. Real journalism, hard journalism is defined by objectivity. But an op-ed has a very specific 
point of view has that subjectivity and it's clearly said it's out there it's, there's nothing wrong with having an opinion and even having an opinion in journalism but you should make that clear this is that this is different than hard news this is uh, my clearly defined point of view and my opinion and we have that opportunity to do that though in an op-ed and it then also reflects the voice of that writer it's very unique to that writer whereas um, uh, hard news and even feature articles to a certain extent are kind of formulaic you use that either that you know inverted pyramid of of writing for mass media or even a kind of a formula that goes into feature writing and, and it's all kind of generic it's, it has the voice of that publication or the voice of that movement or whatever an op-ed really reflects the voice of that individual of the individual writing or the individual speaking or sharing it, it reflects their voice it is written in their voice it is shared in their voice and it's really much more unique and individualized as opposed to very structured and, and formulized um, in uh, other types of journalistic writing so op-eds are different they are different they have a different purpose and they are uh, they're put together differently as we're going to see and they're just different they're a different kind of uh, of animal different kind of, of, of uh, chick as you see here right? um, so there are a couple of key questions we should ask before writing an op-ed. These are, these are some critical questions we need to ask ourselves before we even start with uh, considering or writing an op-ed. Um, first, do I have a clear point? Do I have something specific um, that, I'm, that I'm trying to get at here? Do I have a, a clearly defined goal and a clearly defined point that I can share with the audience? And if so, uh, the second question is, what is it? Can I articulate that? in a sentence, in a, in a few words, in whatever, in as concise a way as possible. Am I able to articulate what my point is? Again, not a long, rambling, vague, theoretical thing, but do I have a very clear point? And if so, can I articulate that very clearly? Uh, the next critically important question is, who cares? Right? Not only should people care, we obviously think they should care, but who will care? That's the important point. Who? Who is my audience here? Who am I trying to reach with this? Um, who am I going to uh, to uh, try and persuade and try and get to inform with my opinion or, or to share my opinion with? That's going to be critical for who I send this to and for how I phrase it and what voice I use and all those types of things, right? So who cares? Be thinking about who you're writing this for. If you're just writing it for yourself, that's called a journal, right? And then that's all you need to do. Just put it down in your journal. If you're trying to reach other people, you need to know who that is so you can uh, identify how best to accomplish that right and then is there substance to my argument is there something meaningful here is there something that people can connect to is there a specific call to action that i'm pushing people toward is there some meaning or is this again just some ethereal you know vagueness that i feel is wrong with the universe i mean that's that's fine but that's not the content of an op-ed we need to have a very specific and clear point we need to know who we're, who we're speaking to or writing to and uh, and what the substance is for that argument can i support it? can i bring the receipts right so when we're prepping for an op-ed what is it that we need to to do in order to get ready before again before we uh, before we really submit this certainly before we even really start preparing it in 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 earnest we need to do some things in preparation for that first of all we've got to determine the topic and the theme so again we need to have a very clear idea about what it is we're we're writing and why we're doing it and what's the theme for this what's my overall strategy um, so we need to very specifically identify okay what's my topic here and what is my theme what is the the, the kind of the the uh, the the, the the, uh, the the frills I'm putting around this and the theme that, that I'm using and the you know whatever some deeper idea behind that okay. then we need to conduct some research and and determine do I have enough substance here do I have support for this do I have the facts do I have you know can I bring the receipts again to use a popular term right now can I bring the receipts for this can I can I find the supporting material that actually verifies and and supports what I'm trying to convince this audience of or again am I just ranting that's a, that's a totally different thing and you can do that uh, but it's not going to be very effective as an op-ed right? so we need to conduct research and be able to support our arguments very very effectively um, then we need to consider the voice again what is my voice and what's going to be the most effective voice to reach the audience we need to think about what tone should I take uh, here and uh, and if we think about things like how much does the audience know about this? And is this something that's already in the public domain? Am I adding to 
this argument or am I trying to raise something um, from scratch or might, you know, when you think about what is that um, going to look like and then what is my voice? How am I going to approach this? What tone do I want to take? And, uh, and, and more importantly, not just what do I want to take? It's what's going to be the most effective in reaching this audience and accomplishing my goal. That's the ultimate objective here, right? Is accomplish a goal. So what is going to be the most effective way for me to do that? And what voice do I need to take on for this op-ed in order to do so, to, to be the most effective um, that I can? So now that we've talked a little bit about what an op-ed is and how it's different from an, a news, a hard news article or a feature article, let's talk about how you put one together. What's the structure of an op-ed article? And it is a little bit different from those other articles. For a, a hard news article, we, we talked a lot about the, in other videos, about the inverted pyramid um, for mass media writing and, and for writing for journalism. We talked about that for hard news articles. And then in our video on feature articles, if you, if you were able to catch it, we talked about how writing feature articles a lot like I like writing a roller coaster and we use that analogy. But in truth, an op-ed is way more similar to like truthfully, like riding a bull at a rodeo. Right? You got to really burst out of the gates and hold on for dear life and get your stuff done quickly and then figure out how to get out of it. Right. And not get trampled by the bull. And I can tell you, having grown up around animals. Bulls are no joke. They are enormous and they are powerful and it's dangerous. And so an op-ed is much more similar to that. It's going to happen in a, in a heartbeat and you got to have a, a very clear plan for how you're going to accomplish it and how you're going to get out of it, to be honest. So the structure of an op-ed, we're riding a bull. Think about that, like the open, right? In the open, we've got to come out of the gates. We got to be ready for that bull to come right out of the chute. We don't have much time at all. We're on a very short timeline, a very specific kind of clock. So we've got to, in the open, we've got to find some way to hook that audience within a sentence or two at most, right? We've got to hook that audience, really pull them in, and we've got to do it on the clock. We are on a very short timeline here. So we've got to have some way to hook that audience in the opening really pull them and make them want to um, read the rest or listen to the rest right? and do so in a very short amount of time. Once we can accomplish that, then we have to get into the body. And this is where we have to convince the audience about what we're saying. This is where we present our arguments in a clear and concise format. And, and this is where we have the opportunity to really bring those receipts, right? We've got to bring the receipts. We can't just start throwing information out there and just expecting everybody to believe us. Right? And, and just to take everything that we say as gospel, we've got to be able to demonstrate and back up and support and show why all of these things are true, why our arguments are valid. We can't just expect people to believe us because we're good people, right? They, they need to know and they need to see what we mean by all this and why it's important. And we've got to bring the receipts in the body. So then we get to the close, which is critically important as well. Again, we're very much on a short timeline here. You're talking in an op-ed 750 to 800 words, certainly much shorter than any other kind of news article that you're going to have, but we've got to have a way to close things out. An op-ed really is in some ways a sales pitch, right? So we can't just throw the information out there and hope that it sticks. We've got to provide that audience with a, an avenue for acting now. What should they be doing now? As they hear this information, what do we want them to do? What do we want them to know, to believe? How do we want them to respond? That's our close. So it's got to be not only quick and, and concise and short, but it's got to be effective. We've got to have some very clear call to action for this audience to get them to, to act now. Something we can do to, to really push them into immediate action. Okay, so we've seen that an op-ed is different than, you know, kind of a hard news article or a feature article even. It's different. We're asking people to consider their beliefs, their values, their their actions, their, their attitudes on these things, and to come in line with our own. And so we've got to be able to um, do so quickly, concisely, coming right out of the gate like that bull, right? we got to hold on for dear life. We have a very short amount of time, that eight seconds or whatever, to, to, uh, to convince them and to provide those receipts, bring the receipts for them, and then to close the sale to really convince them why, you know, they should be in line with our own um, feelings. So an op-ed is, it can be very effective uh, tool for public relations for a variety of reasons, but it's also really uh, one of the more challenging types of news articles that you're going to write in order for it to be effective. If you have questions about op-eds, how they work, what, you know, the best way to put them together, please feel free to email me. I'd love to hear from you and talk to you about that. Um, but in the meantime, I hope this does give you some you know, just basic perspective on what an op-ed is, what it's used for, 
and uh, and how we might go about putting one together specifically in terms of achieving our public relations goals.